Rocksteady, the geniuses behind the Arkham games, are making a Suicide Squad game that comes out on my birthday next year. But I think you know, we have a Harley Quinn video game at home. It's called Elden Ring. Come on, we do this every week. On my quest to find the most fun character in Elden Ring, I unleashed the Harley Hammer on the bosses of the Lands Between. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch, join my Patreon to give me money. Now let's stop joking around and get the big Quinn. As far as starting gear goes, the wretch class is perfect for Harley from the first Suicide Squad movie. We have a bat and no pants. If you can't handle me at my Suicide Squad, you don't deserve me at my The Suicide Squad. We jump into a vat of acid, pop into Limgrave, get a plant horse from Ivy, and some puppies from Raven. They're very big puppies, but they're puppies. Let's feed the dogs a bone and summon them against the Tibia Mariner. They're great for a gank fight since they gank the gankers, letting us focus on Mr. Bones and hit a home run. Now we have some death spaghetti to buy a gas canister from the Catman later, but I realized we're not taking advantage of our fan service costume design. So let's get high, road cave done, and summon the puppies to distract this boss. Break his ankles with the bat, then get into his chest, if the dogs don't get in your way. Classic dog move, always underfoot. Second time we get in there for another home run. Now imagine, Harley Quinn in four tight. We're just here for the Ductus Medallion, unfortunately. Bloody Slash can't turn into Bloody Smash, and we're definitely going to be using strike weapons. Then we blue skidoo to Grail, rob some graves, pick up a somber stone nine for no reason, and Ivy will take us back to her place. Love a good hideout. I expected more plants. I grabbed the spiked Cestit, we're only using it on the dragon ass. Harley is a great hand-to-hand -hand fighter, I've just done so many Cestus runs and will do so many more, I want to mix it up when I can. With all that vigor, it's easy to pop into Fort Pharaoh and get the second piece of the Dectus Medallion, a Golden Rune, and Radigan Sword Seal without dying. Normally it's a suicide mission, but Harley does those all the time, this was a walk in the park. Someone in chat told me about a big bat in Limgrave, so now we'll really be swinging. Let's test it out on Bane before remembering it's just annoying to fight him, so we bring out the puppies anyway. Lunchtime, boys! Today we're eating pumpkin! Dogs can eat it, it'll help with diarrhea. Use canned pumpkin, it has less water. For more fiber, your dog's stools will stiffen up right away. I should tell June about this, she would love to hear about dog shit. Detour to the Weeping Peninsula, we'll smash a beetle for some Joker gas. Love that Joker. Get a few sacred tears while we're here, it's an impulse buy, you just can't say no. And some Grave Glove Wart to upgrade the doggies if we need it. I don't think we will, we're not going to be bringing them in to fight God. For a bigger, better batter, let's head to Lernia and smash up the Crystallion for the Bell Bearing 1. It's the easiest boss in the early game, but if you're struggling, get a big strike weapon. Its initial armor doesn't resist strike very heavily, and you should get a nice home run! Up to Altus, and in a carriage underneath the Ulcerated Tree Spirit, we can grab the Harley Hammer, the Giant Crusher. It's the heaviest weapon in the game, and we still don't have pants. We also don't have the strength to wield it, you need 40 even if you want to two-hand it. For now, let's get the Bell Bearing 2, and then we'll go get paid. Part 1 of getting paid, Pickles. For Pickles, we have to beat Zaz to death. He's not super or anything, just a crazy dude who loves knives. Really weak villain design. You're just a crazy person with a penchant for one weapon. Let's go bash Lex Luthor with our baseball bat. I love baseball bats. I'm crazy about it. Now we can craft pickles for 30% more experience when we kill bosses. And to take that further, let's scoot through the abandoned cave in Gotham. Like a typical Gotham home, it's caked head to toe in pure shit. You can probably see a KFC sign through the front window. Clean rot nights aren't all that bad. Remember, the doggies offset a gank by ganking the gankers. Plus, the big bat makes it harder for them to move, and we get a few. HOME RUNS! Then they drop the Golden Scarab Talisman for 20% boost in experience, which is about 56% when paired with the Pickle. Just makes the game faster. But for the Hammer, we need a lot of experience, and there's a very safe way to do it. It's a bit of a time killer, but it starts with us taking two fingers out of a hole. The whole fingers give us enough wisdom to cast Poison Gas, which makes the Tree Sentinels in the Royal Capital free. Just sneak up behind them and gas. I think they think they farted? It does get a little messed up if you accidentally hit the wrong button, but you can reset them by heading into the capital, and then they don't even get their health back. Amazing. Downside to this, it takes a while. These two died in around 13 minutes. The Draconic Tree Sentinel is just as safe, but also just as slow, another 13 minutes. We get our free runes though. The time might matter later. Who knows? It's actually still not enough for the strength we need, but we haven't even fought Two-Face yet, so I'm sure it's fine. I summoned, what's his name, bring out the puppies, and started swinging for the fences. This is the last boss we're gonna get to home run, since it's gonna give us enough runes to use the hammer. Kind of. I'm still excited to use the hammer, though. It seems like it's gonna be a fun weapon. Honestly, I'm more excited to get some pants. Male gaze be damned. I want pockets. Oh,
Gostok was gatekeeping. I won't stand for that. After he opens the gate, he's our first kill with the Harley Hammer. Remember folks, if you gatekeep, you get the ban hammer. We go on another suicide run through Stormvale Castle. It's a piece of cake. Mongal is here. She wants to kill Arm Fall Off Boy with us. Sounds fun. I love girl time. Here's the thing though. We only have enough strength for the Giant Crusher after we drink our Physic Flask, which gives us plus 10 strength for three minutes. So if that runs out during the fight, we're basically hitting the boss with a squeaky toy. Corey, put a timer on the clock, we have three minutes to squish this boss. Mom, gal, and the puppies should help, and they really do. The biggest help though is just the hammer being an absolute dump truck's worth of damage. I've seen a few people use this for runs where they try and one-shot bosses. We're not doing that here, but I definitely see why it's possible. Arm fall off boy didn't last anywhere close to three minutes, and who can blame him? Harley's just that good. To justify pants, we have to do a big rigama roll. While that this doesn't happen when I do dude runs, they just get a super cape free in a cave that'll also give them a boost to their jump attacks. But Harley has to run around all the goddamn world and smash dragon's faces with a hammer. Sounds fair. Technically, we don't have to kill Smarong, you can just grab the key and run, but hitting a dragon in the face with a hammer is fun. Sometimes running errands is nice, you get to catch up on your podcasts. Raya Lucaria time, let's boogie up to the college and get our PhD. Part of that is dogfighting. It's awful what you have to do to get a college degree these days. We actually broke the Red Wolf's stance, which is wild. It has very high resistance to that, like it has resistance to everything else. Moongrum is a joke upstairs. What are you gonna do? Parry my hammer with your baby shield? Yes. Oh. That's our first death, though. Pretty good. Time for vengeance. Put a timer on the clock. We have three minutes to make Zatanna the pancake. Zatanna is possessing kids. It's kind of a mean thing to do. Let's be nice and smash the kids to death. Then we smash her on the ground and, oh no, we didn't even do half her health. Are we going to be able to get her in two cycles? No, it takes three cycles. We're running low on time heading into phase two. I summon the dogs and pray. But I didn't really need to. Apparently in phase two, we can just take her to IHOP and pancake her until she can't move. Didn't run out of time, but came way closer than we did with Godric. Gil goes really fast. I'm not worried about the timer there. Easy ritual sword talisman for 10% more damage at full health. June wants us to meet an old man on a mountain. She's always trying to set us up. He's surrounded by the demi-human queen Maggie and her wizard simps. We'll just squish them first, then hit Maggie in the, uh, the pelvic floor. Then we get Comet Azur from some old dude. It's important for June that we at least take his number down, even if we're not going to use the spell. There's another old man in the Celia Tunnel, so we head through the town of Horsery. Ignore Barbara Gordon. She's sick. Stay six feet away or else. Then it's just a matter of finding the right place to drop down, and we can get another spell we're not going to use, but June wants it. Happy day. Mr. J is throwing a party in Kaelid, and even though he's our ex, we're still going to go, if only to show him that we're doing absolutely fine. We make a lot of friends, and summon them to fight Darkseid. His Omega lasers aren't that hard to dodge, but when we do get hit, we get hit really freaking hard. We still have Radigan's Sword Seal equipped to wield the hammer, which lowers our damage resistance by 15%. And we're not wearing pants, so our total damage resistance is a whopping total of negative 15. Oof. We whiff a crit. It's so hard to get back to his face in time, and phase two starts a little rough. I summon some more friends, and we beat Radon with the power of friendship and hammers. It's a group effort. June's real body is in another room, so we have to take her... Okay, now that that's over, we can... I am having a conversation! <laughs> okay, uh, very funny. We just have to take her... Okay, everyone dies to hammers now. We can take her soul out is what I was trying to say. Mr. J wants to steal it for the Enchantress Joker powers, but we're not gonna let him do that. Chicks before dicks. Up through Caria Manor, we beat the shit out of the Huntress. Of course she has a horse now, her family is loaded. I know we also have a horse, but for some reason we can't ride it in here. We reunite June's soul with her body, then meet up with her in Raya Lucaria to confront Mr. J. This has been a long time coming. Despite Enchantress having the powers of an actual god, it turns out Hammer is stronger than god. Must be why Wall keeps recruiting Harley. With the Joker dead, we can wear his eccentric pantaloons. I look like Meg Ryan in that video game about the whale who hates rugby. Turns out clothes are heavy when paired with a hammer the size of a Volkswagen. There's an arsenal charm plus one in the Altus Tunnel. It raises our max equip load by 17%. Technically, there's a better one in Caleb, but you have to fight three NPCs and it's only 2% more, so I'm not doing that. While I'm here, I smash some rock guys. Gross. Let's go make a friend made out of poop. Uh-oh. Stinky poop. <laughs> In the Metropolis, we grab Clayface's bail right away, bonk an Erdtree avatar, sorry, Pammy, and jump into the Arkham sewer. Hugo hired some big hands to be guards. What a strange man he is. We bust Clayface out and fight him outside the city. Where's the crab, though? I thought Dung Eater had crabs with him. 
Where is it? I guess it didn't show up. That's nice, makes Slime and Clayface way easier. He'll be our friend, but first we had to show him that we mean business. Also, we gotta get his favorite flavor of La Croix. Back to Carrie Manor, we talked to Raven. She's working with Scarface. These DC Universe parallels doing it for you, gamers. Scarface gives us the La Croix. We give it to Clayface, and he's almost ready to come on adventures with us. First, we have to blackmail Scarface after finding his body pillow collection, then bring him some Starlight Shards. 20 minutes later, we have one of the best spirit ashes in the game, the Dung Eater Puppet. Good spirit ashes cost a lot of mind though so let's fight the jank dragon in dragon barrel how does it jank this time well the flying dragon jumps off a bridge and dies if i had a nickel for every time i was doing a run as a dc heroine and a boss just jumped off a cliff and died i would have two nickels not a lot but it's weird that it happened twice still not enough mind from that so let's duke it out with another tree spirit apologies pammy this one actually gets our goat the first time farting on us a little too hard gross Second try, we get the win and have enough magic to summon Clayface. But he's still weak, so let's get the good Kush to level him up and do the Raven quest. Y'all know how this goes. Enter Darkseid's big hole. Fight Suicide Squad Harley, not to be confused with THE Suicide Squad Harley. If you need a tip telling them apart, the good one wears pants. Ghost Glove War 10, Einzel River Main, say hi to Phalanx Demon's holes. Harley Quinn hammers balls, not clickbait. Glove War 8 and 9, and Clayface is way higher. Level. Back to Metropolis, the Ritual Shield Talisman is too good to ignore, boosting resistances when we're at full health. Say it's a kryptonite pill, that's some good lazy writing. There's a Bane Ghost we have to fight, it's a pretty simple strategy, we just hit it a lot. It's pretty fast, not really worth talking about. On the way to Two-Face 2, two -face, two face we bully Talia Al Ghul for dating a billionaire. Then we summon the Gallist of Pals and the Dung Eater to give Harvey a second life-changing scar. He gets sick and makes it everyone else's problem with a stinky swamp. We almost die when he can summon Radiant Swords and we kill with a big crit. It wasn't actually the big crit that killed him. I had to hit him a few more times. Just pretend it was the big crit, okay? Ivy wants to burn down the weed that's stopping life from happening. Then we have to kill a god. I don't know why she expects we can do that since we're just a crazy lady with a stick. Come to think of it, Batman and Amanda Waller have asked Harley to do that too. I guess that's just kind of the way to do it. Let's finish this sucker. I'm going! Skip the Forbidden Lands and head into the mountaintops of the Giants. Right away, we get the Smithing Stone Bell Bearing 3, so let's go make our hammer better while we're doing it. In Fort Gale, we get the Star Scourge Heirloom for plus 5 strength, then bonk a cat to death until we get the Lion's Claw Ash of War, aka the IHOP attack from the Cloud Run. Ignore Realis, get the final Smithing Stone, then let's stomp some Fire God's toes so hard he dies. The Anklet breaks almost immediately, and his stance breaks immediately after that. He summons some big fire pillars that we can dodge by, standing still not his best move. After phase two, we get an instant stance break, which gets him really mad and inspires the tummy fire breath. It's one of his highest damage attacks, but even though I was puckered, we avoid it and finish the fire giant off without taking a hit. Perfect boss. That's gonna continue, right? Ivy burns herself to stop the evil weed. I'm devastated. Not about my dead girlfriend. I'm devastated because now I have to fight the godskin duo. We've only died twice so far though. How bad could this be? Well, bad. We died a bunch here. Sometimes it was my fault, like when I thought I could poise through the Riddler's Black Flame Tornado. Sometimes it's the boss's fault, because the Penguin uses the rollout and cheats. Sometimes it's a bit of both. All told, we died four times to these bastards. But on the final run, I remembered to bully the Riddler first, then go for Penguin when it's three versus one, then another Riddler comes out, 3v1, and another Riddler. Okay, that's easier. Thanks for going easy on me. The fifth time. We made the swag jump on the first try, and obviously Harley is British acrobatic. Then we take the Draconic 3 Sentinel to IHOP, slamming him into a pancake with the Lion's Claw Ash of War. Now it's time for Catman, one of my favorite Gotham villains. It's a bit of a struggle to find our way in at first, but we're able to stance break him into phase two. We immediately miss an IHOP slam. Its recovery is a bit faster than the charged attack, that's why I'm using it, but it's still not fast. Doesn't matter. We still get a stance break, and he hard-focused Clayface. Easy first try win. Back to Metropolis, it's covered in ashes. Hilarious. Alfred can use magic now. Terrifying. But remember this fight with Cloud? Let's go back to IHOP. Slam, 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 win. If you struggle with Gideon, just go get the Lion's Claw. It makes him a piece of cake. Specifically, a pancake. Big Bane time. I whoopsied and summoned Clayface after I slurped. That means no pancakes for this fight. The hammer still hits really hard and breaks the stance fast for an early phase two. We got grabbed. Never a good idea, but we can break the stance for a few more slams and take it to the final boss. After the required detour to pick up the boost from Godric's Great Rune, that's plus five to every stat, we head in to kill God with a big stance. How will I do that? Simple. 
I hop. The best way to beat Radagon is to hit him so hard he can't move. If he moves, he can hit you with a hammer. If he doesn't move, you can hit him with a hammer. I love how using the Unga Bunga hammer really lets you play with an Unga Bunga brain. I go full caveman. Chug a bit of the blue, let's do phase two. We whiffed early, which means that a stance break is coming later, but not that much later. We bust God down so fast, it doesn't even have time to get out Elden Stars. And I don't mean it didn't have time to use Elden Stars before the first stance break. I mean, it didn't have time to use Elden Stars before before we killed it entirely. At five hours and 42 minutes, we killed 29 bosses and only died six times. It's a new record for fewest deaths, but because we took so long poisoning those tree sentinels, our average time per boss wasn't great. Still, this will average out to a second place finish. Maybe it's just a playstyle thing, but big weapon hit good seems to be the best way to make it through the game for me. And Dung Eater is a goat spirit ash. Also, we're shifting the tier list a bit to even things out. If you want to watch these runs live, follow me on Twitch. We find new ways to play all the time. Join my Patreon if you want to give me money, and follow my other channel if you like D&D. We make builds over there too.